as a man who kind of came up playing, you know, games and, and, and writing about games, and that's that was your first job, and um, you have a, a deep appreciation for your video games. You're not one of these guys, you know, that doesn't understand the medium. You understand it better than pretty much anyone. Is there, and, and you've written your books, you, you've done your films, you're going to continue to do that kind of stuff. Is there an interest in writing a game? Um, have you ever, or are you considering, or have you considered in the past something that hasn't been made or whatever? Or do you want to write games? Yeah, I've, I mean, I've done it. I mean, you know, it's interesting. Back in the day, there wasn't really much of an like, The idea of like being a games writer seemed kind of laughable because games didn't really have stories. I think what's interesting now. It's like, oh, they took the princess again. You got to go get her. Sorry, Mario. Oh, the princess in another castle. Like, hey, that's I mean, this others. robot man and these other robot mans are in trouble. Go get All them. your base are belong to us. I mean, that's like as, as, as sophisticated as it used to be Classic back in the day. Game and that was fine. But I think what's happened is, has been, you know, video games have been through a bit of kind of a, a growth spurt as an art form recently where we started to think, well, why shouldn't they tell decent stories and why shouldn't they have kind of greater narrative ambitions? And we've seen a bunch of games. Uh, over the past few years that have started to tell really interesting stories and then once one game does it you start to think why isn't this other game yeah. doing it it used to be you remember this even anyone's reviewed video games for many years you, you, you kind of I, I, I wrote so many video game reviews back in the day where it's like well the story is not very good but garbage but it's a video fun. game. now you'll actually get dinged for that if your story's not very good they'll take points off and rightly so because the stand has been set mm-hmm. you know Naughty right. Dog and Telltale and Bioware are doing these games where you can tell good stories and now you miss it when it's not in another game um, so I've done a bunch of that work. I worked. Um, I was a story consultant and writer on the season one of The Walking Dead for Telltale. You and, have a BAFTA for that, don't you? Yeah, one, okay. we won a BAFTA. I mean, yeah. like, I don't get to like keep it in my house. It's like at Telltale's <laughs> office. Demand it. Or like, but I we, demand won a, that we won a we won a we won a BAFTA for best story and um, a, a bunch of uh, story awards for. Yeah. I, I, think, I think actually more than any other company, maybe more than any other game, Telltale and that first season of The Walking Dead. Uh, did more to kind of wake people up to the possibilities of storytelling games than any other than any other game. I ended up doing a ton of consultancy, going to other companies after The Walking Dead was a big hit, where they would just sit me down and go like, "Okay, so what's the secret sauce? Like, how, what is it that Telltale does that you know people enjoy the story? Like, how do we do that?" And I would just like just give a shit about the story. Yeah. Like that's <laughs> not the story a story first. Yeah, just put the story first. Kevin Bruno, who's the head of Telltale, just did an interview today. Where he's where he said the, our only secret is literally that we just we don't start with game mechanics we don't start with um, you know a, an idea for you know a particular kind of game design we start with a story and you know that's baked in you know it used to be again whoever wrote the story was just like oh well you know Gavin programmer number six doesn't have much to do today why does he write the story right. and now there's a need to have people who are specialists in that come in and do it and it's been great for me in that I come from a gaming background and I've got a fairly mm-hmm. good understanding of the mechanics of games and what how people play games and and where the story should fall uh and now i'm also you know a writer as well so i can come in and have a fairly good understanding of um how story can help a video game be more interesting but it's still very much we're still learning it like i think video games are still very much like in the silent movie era of sure. their evolution mm-hmm. where uh, we're still kind of figuring out how to do it it's really interesting i did a talk about this at um uh, Disney a few a few months ago where uh, it's, it's someone else's example but I'm happy to steal it um, <laughs> somebody pointed out that each new narrative medium like each new form of entertainment that comes along until it finds out until it figures out like its own identity basically just copies what came before mm-hmm. so you know for the longest time storytelling was stage plays and people got on a stage you know from the days of Shakespeare and you would sit in the audience and watch these actors perform a play and tell you a story right and then when film came along in its very earliest iteration they basically just copied that they would have actors on a stage on a right. set and they would put the camera essentially in the front row of the audience and just you would just watch that like not much editing not, not much right. editing just you know kind of a flat a flat plane and then they began to realize oh wait we can move the camera around we can have more than we can actually put mm-hmm. the camera behind the actors we can right. cut the film and create edits and things like that and, they, and the language of cinema began to emerge and then nearly 100 years later, video games come along. They want to tell stories. What do they do? Oh, let's do an interactive movie. Again, just copying what came before. Right. And we went through those dark days of like CD-ROM interactive movies, which were terrible. Well, tell them under, everything in cutscenes. I still stand by Under a Killing Moon was one of the best games ever made. So again, and, and, and again, I think that was actually the beginning of like starting to, that, yeah, as primitive yeah, as that was, they were starting to try and figure things out. Mm-hmm. Like, what is it about storytelling in a video game that has that is different than in a film and how do we make it unique to us and how do we and how do you use like the unique opportunities that you have for the for the player to actually be part of the story and influence it themselves and that's obviously what walk the walking dead is essentially an interactive tv series where mm-hmm. you get to mm-hmm. play the main character and decide where the story goes and people love that like people love the the, the power of like making 
moral choices and having uh, that kind of power over the story. It's really, people are really, really into that. Was it easier for you to sort of wrap your head around, okay, I'm, I, I know how to write a film because I know sort of like the formula behind that, right? Where we're, we're dealing with still a three-act structure, but there are certain beats that have to hit on cer- around certain pages and this and that. Was it easier for you to walk into a project like The Walking Dead and say, okay, we're going to treat this like an episodic show, like a, like a piece of, t- or an episode of TV. I can kind of wrap my head around how I'm going to tell the story because it's different when when the player actually gets to choose sort of what their dramatic beats are. Yeah, it's vastly different. And I did, in fact, try that, try that. And I got slapped down almost immediately. Really? Because you, what you will learn from the people at Telltale who have been doing this for a long time. Like, we hate TV. That's, yeah. Well, it's not they hate TV, <laughs> so they understand that it can't just be that. It right. can't just be an, a television show where you get to kind of make some choices along the way. I actually think it's by far the hardest medium to write in, not just because, again, it's kind of silent me- silent movies and we're still figuring out what to do and what, how to make a good story in a video game. Mm-hmm. But also because just the burden is that much hard, that much harder on the story. Like it's hard enough to write a film, which is a compelling story that keeps you interested over the course of two hours. Now and now, now do all of that, and add the fact that the player gets to twist and turn the story, and and it constantly needs interaction. Like they used to have a rule at Telltale, where um, if the player isn't given something to do every thirty seconds, they start to get bored. You, they won't just sit and watch like a two minute cutscene. So I would pitch an idea in my naivety. Um, oh, so here's something that could happen, right? Lee and Clementine would do this, and blah blah blah. It's really exciting, and then they would sit and go, "Yeah, what is there for the player to do?" Right. How during the that, gonna, yeah. And I go, "Oh shit, well, not very much." So, okay, well, <laughs> the player can watch. <laughs> pitch that scene again, but in a way that the player gets to influence what happens, and why is it interesting for someone not just watching, but actually playing the role of the lead character right so it's really really hard to do that and that's before you even get into the business of branching narratives and Hmm. like you know a walking dead episode takes about two hours to play a script is about 500 pages long because um you know you have to you (sighs) you might only see one version of the story but we have to write every single possible permutation right and the episode that i wrote number four of season one at the end of it a lot of the culmination of the choice that there's a big thing at the end where lee has to say to the other characters in his group who wants to come with me? Like, who's with me on this next part of the story? And every single choice that you've made at that point is goes through a flowchart, and each person then tells them if they want to help him or not. And there were, and and some of those choices are in, like so. If Kenny were to say one thing, now another character might say something else, and it's like I can't remember how many different we calculated at one point how many different possible outcomes are there to this scene, and it was about. 400 oh i mean it's mad and and all, and, and all of them have to work like yeah. not, not one of those branches can lead to like a logical incompatibility where it was well, he said that that can't be said mm-hmm. and you have to you have to play test and find all of those and it's brutal um but when it works and play, players get to that scene and they feel like they've experienced a version of the story that is not just the same thing everyone else saw but is unique to them and they have some ownership of it because they helped create it right that's really really satisfying for the for the player and so really satisfying for us as well that's crazy <laughs> i can't even imagine that i can't i can't imagine yeah i mean no rush to writing. go back and do it again yeah, <laughs> it's by far the hardest thing i've ever done and i learned an incredible amount um but yeah i mean I, staying in that sort of saying emotionally connected to the material must be really 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 hard when you're telling that vast of a story with that many permutations um Segwaying from that. Well, I'm not. I'm not ready to segue. No, no, no. I'm not. Neither. I'm just have a couple more questions for Gary. Right, well, I have well, a question about this seat. before you segue out of this. Okay. Well, then you ask your question. So then, jump on. Based it. on that experience of how we'll get you more water because we're just going to keep quizzing you the rest of the, <laughs> yeah. the hour. I'll get you some more. I warned you that this might go long because I we tend love to it. Talk too much. No, this is our job. Now. Not, we don't have day jobs. Yeah. What are you talking about? Don't worry about it. No, this is what we want to do. You're, it, this is why we invited you here because. It was so hard, so time consuming, so many different things. Is that one of the reasons you haven't gone back to work with Telltale? Not that not to imply there's bad blood, but like you're so busy with the book, with the movie, with the other screenplay, with this, with After Earth, with, you know what I mean? Like is or is it just that this timing wise didn't work out? Well, or? first of all, you should make allowances for the possibility that I have gone back to work with Telltale. You Minecraft wow. story. That was amazing. Yeah, you like that? Um, I'm animated. Uh it's. I mean, you know, I, I'm. I get offered the 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 game work sometimes, and I, again, I'm a little more having seen how hard it is to uh, yeah. work in that medium. I'm I'm a little bit, a little bit more skeptical about doing it again because it really, really will 
demand a lot of you. Sure, sure. Um, Would you want to go back and do not maybe not a Telltale game, something more like The Last of Us, where this is our story, this is how we're telling it, no branching stuff. This is this is what the narrative is. I have in fact done those things, but I'm not allowed to talk about. (laughs) 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 That's the Inception noise, Nick. No, I understand. You probably didn't know it. That's what you do when you when you freak out. I understand. Inception noise. Well, there you go then. That's awesome. Um, I read a report uh, the other day while well, I was on The Hollywood Reporter that they're trying to staff up. That's just an article. That's not like, you know, have to go, not, every, not everything not on official, The Hollywood right, right, Reporter right, is called a report. It's not an official essay put out by the government. Um, but they're making or they're trying to make a series that is, is near and dear to my heart for the longest time. My question to you is how do we get you on it? Because is I it trust Zelda? you right. Oh, no, no, I know, I know where oh, you're going okay. with this. You're going it's with... a small series called Robotech. Oh, oh. Called what? Robotech? Robotech, yeah. Are you familiar I actually, with this? I actually um, got offered that years and years ago. What? And I, 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 I turn it down. What? <laughs> <laughs> why did you? Why would you? Why would you even dare to turn I'll, that? I'll tell project you. I'll down. actually tell you the story. They sent me this big Robotech box set. Yeah, it's I a have big it. Blue I have box. It. I have like, there's three and I watched boxes. them all. I thought this is pretty cool. Right. But it was a rewrite, which I hate doing. Oh, okay. I really don't. Again, I talked to people. I, I don't. Lo- even though it's a reality of the Hollywood business, I don't love the kind of revolving door of, of writers, sure. and I don't like the idea of coming in and. Rewriting, rewriting someone, someone else. Yeah, I, 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 I did it earlier in my career, but like it's not satisfying for me. I just don't enjoy doing it. I'd much rather create something from the beginning, sure. the whole cloth, and then have someone else come in and rewrite me, as opposed to being the other guy. You just kind of feel weird, like you're kind of dating someone else's girlfriend or yeah. something. It's really like strange. You're a pinch hitter in the bedroom. <laughs> Tim's done that multiple it's times. Tim exclusively dates other people. <laughs> it's, weird, it's weird for me. I don't know if we call it dating. He also dates um, other people's wives. But what happened was, I was like, okay, so I saw, I watched the, I, I watched the, 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 the original Tech 33 series. episodes, right? The I thought it was pretty saga. cool, like mm-hmm. robots and shit. Um, <laughs> and tech. I mean, you know, got yeah, robots and both. tech. Robots and Put them tech. together. I feel like that's, yeah, there's, that, that's cool. And they, and they, and they said, okay, well, it's a rewrite. And I went, Ugh, okay, so I, I don't love doing those. Um, but like, send me the script and I'll at least look at it. And they sent me the script, and it was written by Lawrence Kasdan. Ooh, and you're gonna write I, Lawrence I literally, Kasdan. I literally called them up and said, "If you think I'm going to rewrite the guy who wrote The Empire Strikes Back, you're fucking yeah. crazy." And I turned it down. Well, I, that's that's <laughs> acceptable, I guess, for my, for my small narrow narrow brain to. Uh, I want them to make this, and I think honestly, if you. I was a fan of it when I was a kid, so obviously I'm bringing that nostalgia, that, that nostalgic uh, sort of feeling to this material. But I think it could be an amazing trilogy, and I hope they do a good job with it. Apparently, they're tapping um, the writer of 300 to do it, to actually write a draft of it. But this has also been one of those that's been stuck in development hell for. Her. Well, like I, said, I don't remember how many years it came to me, but it was a long time ago. Well, the show came out. The show came out, I think, in '86, and they've, I think, they've been trying to figure out a way to make a movie out of it since the mid '90s. So. Um, that was the second to last question. I have one more for you, which I think I remember reading an article a while back that had your name listed amongst the people that have that have tried to work or tried to revamp or revitalize the last Starfighter. Was that oh, correct? Oh yeah, that's what a, that's, was the that's, deal with that? That's something that's very near and dear to my heart. I'm a monumental fan of the last Starfighter. Right. It was one of my favorite, favorite, favorite movies when I was a kid. It's just a great Maybe film. because you know I grew up playing video games and mm-hmm. I used to go to the arcades all the time. And so the idea of this story, I mean, it's a classic kind of childhood wish fulfillment, right? You play a video game and suddenly an alien comes down and says, how would you like to play the yeah, game? You're so real? good at this game. Yeah. You're getting called up I mean, it's like, it, it tapped into so I'm many great still waiting. I was so pissed off because I really so desperately wanted to play that game, the actual, the arcade yeah. game that's in the film. Starfighter. And at the oh, end, uh, at the very end of the credits, it says arcade game provided by Atari. And I remember thinking, oh shit, that's a fucking real game that I can go play. So I went to the arcades back in the day when that's something that you did. You went to the arcades. <laughs> when those were places. And, that... I, and I scoured every single arcade looking for Starfighter. Right. And I couldn't find it anywhere. And I discovered years later in a magazine that what that credit meant was that Atari just built the dummy cabinet. Ah, uh, okay. So it was based game, on one of their it wasn't other... A real, yeah. It wasn't a real thing, but Atari m- made it look like a real game. Machine, sure. Yeah, yeah. A real machine. And so I, was, I love that. I love, I love, love, love that movie. And people kind of look at it now in like a cheesy way because it's a little bit cheesy and the special oh, it's effects. It's very cheesy because it was early on in the what, 80s. What you have to remember though is for the, I'm old enough to remember the time that came out, like the first real computer generated effects in a film, it was incredible. No one had ever seen anything like it. It's easy to look at it now like 30 years later and go, oh, yeah, the, the special effects are kind of lazy. Right. But Was that pre-Tron? No. Uh, Did Tron I don't remember. I think no, it was, Tron it was after Tron. Yeah. Um, but it was the first thing that looked like really kind of amazingly computer generated. Right. And 
It's just a great story. I mean, I honestly, this is going to sound like a silly thing to say, but I honestly put it in the same category as something like Star Wars, where it's like, you know, it's a young kid. Think about it, right? So Alex Rogan is Luke Skywalker. He's a young kid living somewhere in the middle of nowhere. Feels like nothing, nothing's going to happen in his life. He right. dreams of like being more and doing more, but he's never going to get out of this backwards town where he lives. Moisture and then, farm. And then suddenly here comes this interesting character from far away, this enigmatic character who says, well, come with me on an adventure in outer space. So I'm at this point describing the story of both Star Wars and The Last Starfighter. And he goes and has this amazing adventure and saves the galaxy. Like, the, you know, all the great stories come from the same basic ingredients. Right. And Star, Starfighter, I think, has those ingredients. And just as a kid, like, you just... There's a great video on YouTube called The Spielberg Face. I don't know if you've ever seen this. <laughs> no. Every, every classic era Spielberg film has it. E.T. has it. Um, Raiders of the Lost Ark has it. At some point, you have a, you, there's a moment where the character just goes like this. Because there's something happening that is so that amazing. Wow, I'm right. You're just awed. And there's usually bright lights on his face, and there's usually yeah. his hair's being blown back. And that's that moment of capturing that moment of like childhood wonder mm -hmm. that every Spielberg, Spielberg movie has. Um, and Starfighter had that for me. I just, I, I just thought it was magical. And so years and years later, right. me, like, it's, it, every time screenwriters get together and talk, the story comes up. Last Starfighter, how the <laughs> fuck are we going to do it? And every single screenwriter desperately, I guarantee you, if that went out tomorrow, Warner Brothers or whoever have, now has the, the rights to The Last Starfighter, wants to remake it, and it's going out as what they call an OWA, an open writing assignment, which means writers are just invited to come in and pitch their idea right. and try to get the job. I guarantee you, every fucking screenwriter in Hollywood would be lying around the block. They all want to do it. Because we all, all the kids of my generation love, love, love that movie. We so desperately want to do a new version to inspire kids today in the same way that we were inspired by it when we in the 1980s but the rights are just tied up in so much impossible red tape I, i've heard a million stories spielberg's tried to do it right seth rogan has tried to make a movie and they've all and none of them have gotten anywhere and so i don't know what the deal is with the rights but they're just stuck in a box somewhere that no one can open and it's incredibly frustrating to everyone because we all want to do it i actually had an opportunity to speak with the creator um randomly after E3 one time through this weird sort of turn of events and I know that he specifically was looking more to turn it into a video game than he was to uh, that would be great too to, to turn it into a, a live action I think he wanted in to the go... video game are you making movies and then an alien comes down and he's like you are the best at making movies come make movies and save the galaxy <laughs> uh, I don't know that it had gone through any sort of development that's an interesting take on it um, if I ever meet the gentleman I'd kind of like to see like the reverse I'd kind of see the reverse version of it where you're like this intrepid space pilot and you're in wars every day like, oh, it's fucking exhausting I have to go out and fight in wars every day and then someone comes along and says, how would you like to go live on a trailer park and just play the video game? Like basically just the backwards it's version. It's the opposite version. Yeah. You get a hot girlfriend and there's some guys with trucks. The, la it. the lazy last starfighter. <laughs> That'd be amazing. We should do a short on that. The you just chill by a lake and someone's like, hey, did you see that explosion in the sky? No, I, like, des I, des I desperately want to do it. But so, do, trust me, that's like a get in line type situation. Yeah. Someone out there has the rights and doesn't want to do it. And they've had money thrown at them. They've had every... Trust me, every studio wants to do it. I like how he's like, that's a get-in-line situation. The guy who wrote a standalone Star Wars movie. <laughs> no, no, I know. I, I mean, that's... But it, it is right. I mean, it's, it's sad. It is one of those movies that sadly sort of slipped through the cracks from the 80s. Sure. Like, that begged to be a mega franchise. Yeah, because I think, you know, I'm really, really cynical about remakes. I think, you know, they have to be... You have to do them for the right reason. And well, would your take on it be a remake or would you do just a sequel to Honestly, it? I won't allow myself to think about it too much because I'll just get depressed. Right. <laughs> um, but I think Starfighter is one of those ones where it's it's old enough now. It's a great story. And I think kids today should see a story like that. Mm -hmm. But it's old enough now that if you put it in front of like a 12-year-old today, they would probably find it very dated. Sure. Like, yeah. It looks very 80s. They're like, what's wrong with these visual effects? Like, what is that done on a on a on an Amiga? Like, what is that? Yeah, they can do that on their iPhone now. I think it actually was done on Amiga. Um, it might have been. So I think if you can take a story like that and and kind of keep the values and keep what was magical about it and just but just represent it in a way that a modern audience would would accept, then that has value. Interesting. True. All right. And all that right. That's all the questions I have for Mr. Gary Witta. Nick Scarpino, film buff. 